Hello Internet and welcome to CodeBig. In this video, we will be web scraping inspirational codes by using Python. I hope I got you excited, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. Without wasting any time, let's get started. To follow along, I want you guys to have some basic understanding of Python. We won't be doing anything crazy like pushing these codes into our database and fetching data from there. That's for another video. I just want you guys to get a feel for web scraping. So this is like an introduction video to web scraping using Python. So here we are on Goodreads website. This is my go-to place for finding top rated novels and inspirational quotes. They have a pretty good community of readers as well. I know this because I'm part of one and I also love reading novels and reviewing them. You can check out my Instagram handler to know more. I also left a link to it in the description as well. You see, we are on the inspirational quote section and we see quite a few quotes from Oscar Wilde all the way to John Lennon. If we look at the URL, we see that we are currently on page 0 and just by changing the page number and hitting return, I was able to fetch a list of new inspirational quotes. With that out of the way, there is one thing we need to understand, the HTML structure of these quotes. To know that, we can select any quote, right click on it and go to inspect element. We have a div with a class code details under which we have an image, code text and code footer. We are only interested in the code text for now. On opening that up, we see we have a quote, then a line break and the author or the title of the quote. Now that we have a place to fetch our quotes from and we also know how the URL and the HTML is structured, we can jump in and code it out. Here, I am on REPL, which is an online code editor. You can find a link to this in the description below. Also, you can follow along on any code editor of your choice. The first thing we need to do before we start coding is install the necessary packages. The only package we will be installing is Beautiful Soup 4, which, if you don't know by now, is a package for parsing HTML and XML documents using Python. So, we head over to the packages section under REPL and search for Beautiful Soup 4 and click on the very first result. Then click on the plus button to install the package. You can install the package by doing pip3 install Beautiful Soup 4 as well. With that out of the way, let's start coding. From BS4 package that we just installed, let's import Beautiful Soup. Let's also import requests which is a simple way to make HTTP request in Python. Now, let's create a couple of variables that we might need along the way. First off, we need a variable to hold our codes. Next, to hold our authors. And finally, we need one to hold the combination of codes and authors called combined list. And note, all the variables created are lists in this case. Next, let's create a function called scrape website. And as you saw earlier, we can pass in the page number and fetch codes from different pages. So let's tell the scrape website function to accept page number as a parameter. And let's just real quick call scrape website and pass zero to it, which means we are fetching a list of code from the very first page. First off, we convert the page number of the type int to string and assign it to a variable called page number. Next, let's create a new variable called target URL and copy and paste the URL up to page equals to and then we set it equals to the page number. If I just print the target URL and run the code, we get the URL printed on the right. If I click on the URL, we are taken to the appropriate HTML page. With that done, the very next step is to make an actual HTTP request to that page. We accomplish that by doing request.get the target URL. and we set the response of that to a variable called web page. If we console log web page, we get the status code of making that HTTP request. In this case, it is 200, which means the request was served successfully. But now, let me update the print function to output webpage.text instead. If I hit run, you see we get the entire HTML response of the web page we just requested. How cool is that? What we do next is use Beautiful soup to parse our HTML. Beautiful soup accepts two parameters, the markup and the type of the parsing that is needed. In this case, 
we create a variable called soup and assign it to beautiful soup and pass web page dot text as the first parameter and the second parameter is html dot parser. If we print the value of soup, we see the parsed HTML document. Now we know that each code is enclosed within a div with the class code text. So let's first find all the occurrences of div with the class code text and assign it to a variable called code text. If I print the value of code text, we get an array of divs which contains the code and the author. Next, we loop through the code text variable. Here, before doing any operation, I want to show you what is the type of the variable i. If I print the type of i and hit return, we see on the console on the right, it shows it is of the type bs4 element tag. And hence, we can use custom methods like find, find all and so on. I will be leaving a link to beautiful soup documentation if you want to know all the methods available in this module. I will just print the value of i dot text to show you what we will get. If I hit return, we see we get only the text and we discard the HTML part of it. How cool is that? Now we have both the code and the author, but the formatting is not proper. In most cases, we want the code and the authors to be separate. What we will do first is update our print function and tell it to strip the parsed code text of any white spaces and split it based on a new line condition. Now, if I hit return, we see we get each code in an array with the code being the first element followed by a dash and a few white spaces and finally the author name. So we can create a variable called code and assign it to i.text.strip.split on new line and access the first element from the array. We know that the author exists as the fourth element in the array, but that might not always be the case if there are additional white spaces present. We also know that within the div with class code text, we have a span with class author or title. So we can do something like this. I dot find span with attribute having the class author or title and we get the inner text and split it off any white spaces. Finally, we just push the value of the code and the author into our quotes and the authors list. The last thing left for us to do is combine our quotes and the authors list and append it to combined lists like this. And now, if I print combined list and hit return, we get the desired output. We have successfully extracted data from Goodreads website and stored it in a variable called combined list. In the real world, you would write a scheduler function that would scrape the website and push the result into your database. In the follow-up video, we will scrape data from QuickBus, store it in Firebase and show it in our own website. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out. If you have any doubts, please do leave it in the comment section. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.